Up today, I have not one but two guests with me from Verizon, Cheryl Gresham and David Kim from Verizon Value. Cheryl's their CMO, has been there since 2021. And Cheryl, you may remember from our show back in episode in November, so it's great to have Cheryl back. And David Kim, who's the CRO of Verizon Value and has been there since March of this year. Great to see both of you guys and uh, thanks for joining today. Thanks for having us, Matt. Good to be back. Yeah, sure. So, so, so we have some big news uh, to announce in a little bit. But first, David, since uh, you're a first time guest on the show, we'd love to hear a little bit more about you and your background and what drew you uh, to the team at Verizon Value. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question, Matt. So I've been in wireless my entire career. In fact, my first job was uh, selling phones um, years and years ago. So I've always been a part of the wireless industry, uh, been able to uh, represent brands like Boost Mobile, Virgin Mobile, um, and several different prepaid brands. I, I pretty much grew up in the in the space. Uh, and most recently, I was at T-Mobile uh, with the fixed wireless business. And what drew me to Verizon uh, is who would not want to work at the carrier that has all the brands, uh, the most powerful brands in the world, um, and especially in the prepaid uh, space. Uh, Verizon value is just so strong relative to this environment. Uh, so it was a, just a tremendous opportunity for me to be able to join uh, and work with this great team. Absolutely. And Cheryl, we spoke about this a little bit the last time we talked, but I think one of the big opportunities that still exists in the wireless space is just a full comprehension of the consumer to truly understand what 5G is and why it matters to them. Um, you know, if you speak to most consumers, they don't really understand it. Where are we in terms of the adoption curve of consumers in 5G? And I think what has to happen for it to sort of be widely understood in terms of what its impact ultimately is going to be on the consumer? Sure, sure, sure. I will. I will do my best um, at that. But what I'll say is, I, I think you know, for many people now, um, you know, depending on you know what type of handsets they're using, you know, most people have adopted and gotten into the four G and even five G. I think um, what we're seeing in terms of what needs to be understood to understand the value of that is, uh, you know, most people, right? We're all we're all human. And, you know, you leave your house and you might go down a hill and, you know, your reception changes. And a lot of times people will rack that up to, uh, you know, are they on 5G, 4G, you know, which wireless carrier they have. And so I think in terms of, you know, understanding the impact of that, I think, you know, Verizon, you know, has done a great job of talking about the strength of its network and the most, you know, being one of the most dependable networks in the nation and I think just continuing to reinforce that message with consumers and also, you know, to be honest, helping make great handsets available to consumers. And I think, you know, we'll get into it more, but I think that's been something with DK and his vision of Verizon value, bringing in the ability to get better handset uh, quality and, and options available for the consumers that come into Verizon value. So if a 5G connection is important to them that they can get it, as a Verizon Value customer. And, and Cheryl, just for, the, for those in the audience who don't know, can you maybe quickly just give an overview of what Verizon Value is relative to the broader Verizon Wireless portfolio? Sure, absolutely. Um, it is a newer concept to Verizon. Um, you know, past couple of years, I think the original acquisition of the track phone brands was in late 2021. And uh, was at least when they agreed to the deal. And so, you know, Verizon acquired the track phone brands, brought them into the Verizon family. And so we merged all those brands, which a lot of folks, you know, have heard of track phone, but um, they may be surprised to hear that under that umbrella were great, incredible brands like Straight Talk, uh, Total, Simple, Walmart Family Mobile, and, and many, many others. And so we brought in those brands into the Verizon family and merged um, the group with Visible, which has been out for several years now. Visible is, uh, uh, you know, made within Verizon brand uh, that serves a digitally focused consumer. And then also merged it with the Verizon prepaid uh, group as well. And so all of these brands are meant to serve the value focused consumer and, you know, an opportunity for Verizon to just quite honestly expand its, its reach of consumers and, and hit them with you know, great value, great experience, and bring people into the Verizon family who may not have been before. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, some categories have tried to successfully in terms of coming up with 
new brands for different segments. Um, you know, there's a case to be made where you just want to build one brand. Verizon is obviously such a powerful brand, probably one of the most well-known brands um, in the world. You know, what are the nuances, I guess, in terms of building a, a, a portfolio of brands around a particular consumer set? Because obviously, I would imagine that the consumer set you go after has different needs and desires in the broader consumer audience. Uh, DK, you want to maybe elaborate on that? Yeah, Matt, that's precisely right. Um, the benefit and strength of Verizon value having all our brands is really we can uh, go to the marketplace, listen to our customers, hear what they want and need, and then build a product and a value proposition around that. So as Cheryl mentioned, we have several brands. Uh, when you think about Straight Talk, uh, it is one of the most powerful brands in the prepaid ecosystem that's exclusively sold at Walmart. Um, and it does extremely well. It's one of the top brands in the US. Um, and you, you look at a brand like Visible, that's for the, the digital uh, savvy customer. Um, and again, all tied towards where does the customer shop? What type of value are they looking for? And you know, in, in the spirit of what we're talking about today with Total, uh, that's exactly what we set out to do as we're looking to relaunch this brand is spending time listening to our customers, hearing what they really want and need and breaking out everything that they don't want um, and giving a value proposition as best value uh, and best in class uh, for this customer base. So that's the beauty of what we're able to do is we have the power of Verizon's network. Uh, Cheryl mentioned 5G, right? Why is 5G important? Speed is what you need. And at the end of the day, what do customers want? They want speed, they want consistency. When they're streaming their video, watching Ted Lasso, they wanna be able to make sure that they're watching it um, at their pace. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we really took that to heart as we built out the new total, um, really focused on making sure they have a great experience. So so let's get into it. I mean, you obviously have a, a big announcement today, and we're humbled and honored to be one of the channels that Verizon is getting a sneak peek to in terms of this new brand announcement. Um, Cheryl, you want to tell us about uh, the new announcement that Verizon has today to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. We are super excited to launch a new value proposition and brand refresh in support of it uh, called Total Wireless. And we are evolving Total by Verizon into Total Wireless. And this was really led by the research and learnings that DK and his team were finding about this unstoppable target that we talk about and the segment that we're trying to reach in these urban communities. Uh, we wanna be competitive. We want to serve this community give them access to Verizon's amazing network, give them price guarantees and consistency so they're not surprised by price ups and you know a lot of different things that happen um, with some of our competition. And so bringing faster data, uh, price guarantees, and uh, just even better speed, right? To this consumer at a really great price under $30 a month, taxes and fees included is really important to us. And it's so important from a competitive standpoint that we actually uh, created a space for consumers to check it out on their own. And we created totalfacts.com. And so if you go there, you can see what exactly Total Wireless is all about from a product standpoint and what you're getting uh, compared to the competition. And I think it'll be pretty eye-opening and pretty compelling um, to hopefully make people switch and come check us out. I think, too, the brand refresh is going to look, feel, and just fit really well in these communities that we're opening up our stores. And, you know, we did a lot of research, too, about how to fit in in the best way and uh, complement and add to the communities. And uh, so I think you're going to be really surprised and pleasantly surprised at how Total Wireless is gonna show up. Yeah, and DK, one interesting part of the launch I saw is that you're gonna be launching a separate site called totalfacts.com, which shares a little bit about the new offerings and how they compare against other competition in the marketplace. Tell us a little bit about um, you know, why you decided with that tactic and, and what it's gonna uh, unveil for the consumer. Uh, that's a great question, Matt. So. You know, as we mentioned, we went, spent time visiting our stores and the competition. And one of the things that we heard when we visited a lot of our stores and the competition is statements like, oh, you're pre, no, this is prepaid. Um, we don't, we don't do that here. If you want that, you got to go to a postpaid plan, right? And it's referring to speed. Um, hey, if you use over X amount of gigs, you get this thing called, de you know, throttle, deprioritized or capped. 
right? In the wireless world, those are three very bad words of I'm going to cap you, I'm going to deprioritize you, um, and so forth. So uh, what TotalFacts.com aims to do is just to share our value proposition against the competition in a fair way that highlights um, what we've included, um, what our speeds are, um, and just be fully transparent to our customers so that they can make the choice of what's best for themselves and their families. So it's a cool website. It's going to be cool for our customers to be able to see. And again, also get educated, Matt. We've talked about that earlier of how do we also educate our customers uh, for the gotchas. Uh, so once they see that, they can see, you know, other carriers for activation fees and all these different things. Um, and so we want to just make sure we highlight that for our customers and they can make the choice. Yeah, it's very exciting. And, and DK, one uh, piece of its overall announcement, which I just thought was really compelling to the consumer, is now, now consumers get... Uh, you know, unlimited data for less than thirty dollars a month, and you're guaranteeing it for five years. And I think in the world where you go to the supermarket every day and people are complaining they can't believe how much eggs cost, um, you know, inflation is a real thing, especially for the segment that we're talking about. For you to be able to guarantee consumers that same price um, for five years, I think is remarkable in this industry. So kudos to your organization for being able to pull it off. What goes behind a decision like this, and and why else do you believe this is kind of going to be something that lands home with your consumer? Yeah, Matt, I'm, I'm so excited you asked this question because uh, that was our inspiration. We, what we did was we spent a, a significant amount of time visiting stores, um, spending time in our stores, going to visit competitive stores and getting really three feet from our, our customers and just listening. Uh, just sometimes you just got to listen. And I would spend a day in a store and hear customers feedback. And what I would hear is, um, hey, my price went up. Why is that? Um, I would hear, hey, uh, my data is slower for some reason today. Why is that? Um, I would hear, um, hey, I'm trying to get a new phone. What type of offers can you give me? Oh, I can't get that offer because I'm prepaid. Um, those are the things that we heard uh, throughout our, our research. And so as we built our value proposition, you know, what we really whiteboarded was, how do we create something uh, that's first of its kind, really designed for our customers, totally with our customer and, and designed to give them what they really want. So, you know, you, you hit on the first one, the price is a price. That's our five-year guarantee. What they pay today is what they're going to pay for five years. They don't have to worry about it anymore. We're also including taxes and fees um, to make sure that, again, the price is the price. Uh, the second piece that you hit on really ties into our conversation about 5G, our conversation about, you know, giving customers the speed that they want. And so we're giving 10x the data. And what that means is we're unlocking Verizon's power of its C-band network for our prepaid customers. And this is the first time um, that we're really doing this for our entire customer base because, again, we want them to experience Verizon's network, get the speed that they need. So when they're, uh, whether it's work, home, or play, they're getting the, the value prop that they really want. Um, and then the other capabilities that we built with this is our prepaid customers often don't get, you know, great device promotions. So the other thing we've done is we said, hey, let's give our customers after a year, because they came in, they bought a phone, but a year later, they probably want to upgrade. Let's give them a credit so that they can upgrade a year later, make it really easy for them, give them $200 so that when they come in, they can pick a phone, pick the plan that they want if they want to upgrade their plan and be out the door as simple and easy as possible. So that was the the whole vision and inspiration behind this value proposition was listening to our customers uh, and making sure that they have great value. Yeah, and obviously Charlotte CMO, you know, launching a new brand under the umbrella of Verizon Wireless is no small feat. I'm sure there are no shortage of meetings and, and decisions that had to go into this launch. Tell us about you know, takes behind the curtain, if you will, in terms of what goes behind a launch like this to come out with a completely new brand look and feel um, for this launch. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's I mean, what a journey and what a gift. Right. I, and I know that may sound corny, but I I talk a lot about, you know, sometimes as marketers were challenged to market products and services that are a challenge. And this one is, you know, DK hit on all the points. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is this is a gift. This is a great product to sell. And so how do we bring it to life? How do we do this brand refresh? So um, a look behind the curtain, I'll say, you know, we obviously had done a ton of consumer research and really understanding what segment we were going after and, you know, who we wanted to compete with and where we wanted to compete. And so 
as we started to look at that, we started to see that we're really rolling out our store build in um, more urban communities. And, you know, to back up for a moment, Total by Verizon has been available in about 100,000 different locations, right? Everywhere from Dollar General to Walmart to Best Buy to Target. You could go buy that. But as we roll out the stores, we're building in these urban communities. And so we really got into the space of who our segment would be, how we would communicate. I'll tell you, we did a, a lot of research. We brought in um, designers and um, folks who live in other international markets as well to have a point of view on, you know, what is the look and the feel of brands that live in these spaces and, you know, not coming in and, you know, changing the community but coming in and being a part of the community. And so I think, you know, when you see it, it's going to feel different. It's going to feel different from what, you know, you might expect from Verizon. And um, you're going to probably see a little bit more colorful. We talk about bringing, you know, the bringing the full life of the community into the brand. And so we worked a lot on the research, then the design, the target, uh, you know, at the highest levels of leadership within Verizon, we had discussions with them as well about what the plans were, what the vision was. Uh, everyone's aware. Everyone knows. They're excited. Uh, Verizon's leadership is behind this team and extremely supportive. So it's it's been quite a journey. Uh, and, you know, as I mentioned, I think one of the things that I personally appreciated the most about it was looking at how how... We, other people in our category advertise in other international markets as well as other um, competitors and even, I'll call it, you know, side-by-side -side, um, businesses operate in the communities that we're opening up in and really leaning into that look and feel. What does that look and feel like? How do we present ourselves? Again, so that we're appealing to that segment versus bringing in what we think fits and putting that in the community. So I think you're going to see a different look and feel for sure, an energy. Yeah, I mean, I think being able to weave the brand to the fabric of the community, so to speak, is, is an art form to be able to do. And especially with all the considerations you have of being part of Verizon, it's not like you're a startup that was just birthed in the garage. So it must be a balancing act for sure. And, and when you speak about community engagement, you know, DK, I know Total Wireless really emphasizes commitment to serving Latino audiences um, and other niche communities. Can you share a little bit more about your strategies and future plans, maybe deepen the connections in those communities and, and, and tell us why that's important to you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, as Cheryl mentioned, you know, again, a lot of our, our research was being, you know, in these markets, visiting these communities. And we want to be that neighborhood beacon um, that's designed for the community, as you put it best, uh, be a part of the fabric of that community. Um, and, and quite frankly, Matt, I grew up in this community. Um, so it, it means a lot to me. Um, I call them the unstoppables, the the, the folks that uh, they deserve better. They deserve, they work hard every single day for their family um, and they deserve better. And that was our intent. I was give them more. And so our Latino communities, our urban communities, our goal is to, again, give them great value propositions, whether it's international calling, uh, whether it's family plans, where we're now going to offer our fourth line free. So as families decide uh, to give phones to their children um, to, to make sure they're connected to them, that we can give them a line um, included as well. So that's you know one of our initial launch um, propositions that we're doing. Everything, again, that, that we're designed to do is how do we think about this community, be a part of that fabric? Um, and make sure that we stand out as in that neighborhood, um, a brand that uh, proves it's worthy of being in the neighborhood and earn the respect of that community. Um, so that's what we're trying to do, whether it's uh, the Latino community, the urban community, um, a customer who's looking to get great value and save money and also have a consistent bill. Um, Matt, as you mentioned, right, the price of eggs go up every single day. It's hard to you know, balance your budget every single month. Um, so it's really important to us that we earn uh, the right to be in, in customers' hands um, and give them a value proposition that uh, makes sure that they get what they really need. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of eggs, I mean, wireless service is becoming a necessity in this economy and in this world. You know, the digital divide is real. And for underprivileged communities, 
them not having access to data, which drives everything from obviously their professional communications to hearing from their uh, you know, kids, teachers, or whatever it may be, is really a necessity to survive in this modern economy. So I think, yeah, so I think it, it has been something that has been holding people back. And I think many of us that live on the coast or, or you know, work in tech companies, sometimes it's easy to just disregard how important it is to be able to have high-speed, reliable access to the information that you need that essentially becomes the pulse of your life. Um, so that's why I think this is such an important initiative that Verizon is undertaking. Yeah, 100%. Again, when you have Verizon's network and you have the capacity that Verizon has, it enables us to unlock uh, things for our customers uh, that they need every single day. Um, and the key word is need. Um, it's not just want, it's what they need. Um, and again, that was our inspiration behind uh, Total Wireless and ensuring that we provide that. Yep. So Cheryl, we talked about all the work that went into the, the rebrand and the look, tone and feel that you're coming out with. Now, obviously the next step, as you know better than anyone, is making sure that your customers are hearing it loud and clear. And Verizon has um, obviously a long history of being a prolific marketer and, and great brand builder. What are some of the strategies that you have in mind here in 2024 and heading into next year to launch this important initiative? Yeah. You know, it's, it's fun. I tell people, if you love marketing, you're going to love working on this, this brand and this rollout because there is a little bit of everything. And, you know, I've been in the, in the field for a little while in marketing and like, there are, are, are things we're going to be doing with this launch that, you know, many of us haven't done in a long time. Um, we are obviously going to come out with a big, you know, national presence and, and really make sure that people are aware of total wireless and they're aware of the wonderful, you know, value proposition that we have. But what I love about this too, is that you're also going to be able to shop online. So if you want to go to totalwireless.com, if you're interested in learning more, you can, um, there's an, you know, obviously heavy online buying component. Uh, we are obviously still selling with national retailers. And so, you know, that's a very important part of this rollout and working with them, making sure that, you know, we've got a great connection with them and are helping drive sales in their stores. And, and lastly, I would say, you know, DK mentioned the last three feet with the consumer, um, but we also talk about the last mile. I mean, we're, we're going to have local marketing and we're, op you know, we're opening stores by the end of 24, we'll have over a thousand stores. And I can't tell you, you know, I, I started in local marketing in my career and you know, working with Toyota dealers and McDonald's franchisees back in the day and driving around in cars, looking at out of home boards to make sure they were in the right places, right, to drive that traffic in. And, and you know, there's an element of our marketing that is going to be that and that's going to be, you know, holding events at the stores and and, you know, doing great, you know, I mean, van hits, things like that, like when, you know, and, and just really making a celebration out of total wireless relaunching, having great products, and really being a competitive player in the space, um, you know, to shake things up. So a little bit of everything I'll say is the exciting part and sort of stretching, um, you know, your marketing muscle from, you know, the, the online, digital, being really smart there, driving traffic, um, but also getting people into the stores and getting, you know, the awareness and, and all those wonderful brand health metrics up. Absolutely. No, it's going to be exciting to see for sure. So switching gears more broadly now, just to the industry at large and both to you and your roles uh, moving forward. DK, I'm just curious to hear from you. What do you think some of the new innovations that we have to look forward to in, in your category? I mean, what's interesting about the wireless category is it, it's sort of like water that runs through the pipes of, of this new digital economy, right? So whether it's AI or 5G or streaming to the home, you're right there in the center of it. It's not like you're going to be disrupted by anytime soon. Maybe the form factor change is no longer going to be wired cable into the back of TVs, but that's what 5G is for. You know, so obviously that's great because it gives you a platform to know that you're not going anywhere and you can kind of build from there. But what are some of the other things that you have your eye on um, at Verizon, you know, as we, as we move ahead? Uh, for us, you know, connect, connectivity is at, at its core of everything, right? So when you think about what's coming next, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, uh, uh, 
access to broadband. So in our total locations, we also sell home broadband um, to give our customers a great service where there's no contract, there's no credit check, they can get home broadband um, inclusive of, of some of our plans. So that's one of the things that I think uh, we're starting to do in, within our area of expertise. Um, but you, what you'll also see is um, an expansion of connected devices. You'll see an expansion of things that um, are designed for different segments. I, I mentioned, you know, kids and I mentioned, um, you know, ensuring safety. You'll start to see, I think, things around that nature of how, how parents would make sure that their kids are, are safe, uh, make sure that the uh, kids get to school on time and so forth. So you'll start to see innovation, I think, relative to that. Um, other areas that I think are really interesting is when you look at how customers consume data, um, whether it's on their phone or at home, it's how do you also put it all in one package where it's just easy to understand. Today, uh, you know, when you looked at content and streaming um, and all the different platforms that are out there, it's really confusing, uh, whether it's Disney+, Plus, Netflix, um, all different consumption. So I think you'll start to see innovation there as well to make it really easy. You know, We call it one click, right? How do you get customers to be able to get access to what they want and need very easy um, and, and just make it e easier to understand. Because again, if you set, take a step back and you look at what we're trying to do with Total, we're trying to make a very simple, easy value proposition designed for our customers by listening to our customers. Therefore, another area that we listen to is, hey, it's really complicated in terms of my content. Um, I want to get this content, um, but I can't get it on my rate plan. How do I do that? So you'll start to see us really focus on delivery um, in simplistic forms that help customers get connected. Yeah, especially, you know, we're talking about consumer segmentation and the baby boomer generation who did not grow up with the internet household. Like my mother lives alone in Florida and calls me two to three times a month. Love you, mom, but you do. Um, in terms of how to get certain shows or how to find her password or why this isn't working. And I have to imagine she's not the only one. And I think, you know, it, it does ostracize that consumer with all these choices and change that we've seen over the last decade. And I think there's a huge opportunity for a company like yours to help, like you put it, just simplify the experience for consumers so they can get to the content that matters to them most. Yeah, my barometer of success is the same thing. My mom and my dad, when my mom call, I'm like, you know, executive care for my mom. Uh, she calls me every day about something that's not working relative to her phone or her streaming. Patience is key there, DK, right? You got to be patient through it. I'm trying to be patient, you know, and, and walk her through it. And, you know, they live uh, in Arizona. So it's like, you know, a FaceTime call where I'm asking her to turn the camera around so I can see like her screen and, you know, all those different things. But, you know, that helps me to think about how do we innovate, right? Like this is a problem, not just that I'm going through, right? There's, there's, uh, this problem exists every single day. So uh, that's the thing I'm really excited about. You know, Cheryl mentioned it, the support of Ryzen's executive team. Um, our leadership team. That's what's been really fun about this, Matt, is, you know, we're all in this together of one common mission of simplification and getting customers with what, what they want and need. And it's been really fun. Absolutely. No, it's going to be exciting to see. So let's just wrap it up here. I will just kind of uh, go off the rails a little bit and start with you, Cheryl. Just curiously, what was the most, ex put, putting this campaign aside, because it's obviously unfolding as we speak, but if you think back to a time in your career where you felt the most excited and invigorated. What were you working on at that point and why? I think, you know, for me, it was probably Doritos Locos Tacos launch back in 20, goodness, it was either 2012 or 20, I think it was 2012 at Taco Bell. And um, I think there were a couple of reasons why it was so invigorating. Um, the company had been in a crisis um, that we referred to internally as the beef crisis. Uh, when I hit right when I came on board. So good timing. Um, and it was all about like, is it fake beef? And so our sales had plummeted. I mean, my goodness, it sounds crazy to say today we were running 88 cent crunch wraps to get people in the door. And, um, there was a lot of turnover at the leadership level and layoffs had happened and all sorts of stuff. And, we had this idea, our, our CEO at the time who became chairman and is now retired, had this idea of like, what if we made a taco shell out of a Dorito? And anyway, so we all rallied behind it. And I was thinking about a term, um, but it was a very collegial feel of all the groups working together, everybody on the same team, not fighting or nitpicking, but like everybody had a common goal 
and I'll say trust and respect, which I think helps people take bigger risks. And, uh, you know, we took some risks with that and, you know, took some, you know, big swings that we weren't sure if they were going to work or not. But I would say that was probably one of the most exciting. And it's it's interesting because as I, I sit here and tell you about it, the results were obviously great, right? Great results helped turn the company around. But I think it was, you know, that, that old saying of people remember how you make them feel. And I think it was the feeling of the people that I was working with, you know, the leadership, the common goal, um, you know, taking risks and, and, you know, just bi big ideas, you know, and also we were, you know, we were a challenger at that point. We were still, you know, I think number five in the fast food category and people, people laugh at me when I say it, but I see a lot of similarities to what we're doing right now in the value category with my time I spent in, in QSR value. And, uh, the mentality is very similar in some ways. So that was a good one. Yeah, that was, that, that's a great example. And I think what dawned on me as you were going through that story is just and how many times it's so common that the biggest opportunities come from the challenges you face, right? Either personally and professionally. So here you are, you know, working at a company that's going through a crisis and from it, you were able to kind of come together for a common goal and common challenge. And then when you look back at one of the most exciting, invigorating times, it was on the heels of, of a huge, uh, you know, challenge that the company was facing. And I just think that's interesting in terms of all of us, all the listeners who might be going through a stressful time at work, just know that that creates fertile ground for maybe a huge memory or a huge win that you can get in your career. Yeah, I absolutely think so. And I got to tell you, I mean, I think in some ways, like, and I say for us here, we're a challenger brand right now. You know, we are a challenger brand and I like, I like being there. I mean, we want to get on top, but you know, there is a different way that you operate. There's a different mindset and you know, it's, 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 it's great. It's, it's been exciting to hear. So, and David, just to wrap up with you, um, you know, you're the chief revenue officer at, you know, at Verizon Value. What, what goes on into that role? Like what, what does a day look like for you? And because obviously revenue at a company like Verizon is different than a startup software, <laughs> software startup in terms of the amount of revenue you need to drive and what that entails in terms of your everyday activities. Would you love to just hear a little bit about the pie chart of your day? Yeah, the, the, the days are busy, um, but, uh, but it's awesome, you know, and, and to hit on what Cheryl just talked about, um, this is a very rare moment um, that I tell my team all the time, like, remember the moments, because when I look back at my career, I've, I've had the great fortune of being a part of a lot of launches, startup environments, um, you know, incredible things that we launched uh, for, um, you know, the wireless, you know, sector. Um, but when I think about what we're doing right now, uh, listening to our customers, de designing value proposition for our customers, it is such a rare opportunity. Um, and not to mention uh, this leadership team. You know, it's funny, um, I've been here five months and uh, we all landed in Miami uh, we go to dinner. None, none of us, we all don't know each other. Um, and we're at dinner and I remember sitting back at that table, like, wow, this team is going to be great. Um, because we all just immediately clicked. We all had the same vision. We all had the same, uh, tonality of like, Hey, we're, you know, a challenger, like, let's go challenge. Um, let's go win. Right. Um, so that segues kind of into your question of like, what does my, my day look like? Look, we have a hundred thousand points of distribution. Um, so, you know, we drive a lot of revenue. Um, and at the end of the day, I have customers from national retail, um, to our dealer partners, um, to obviously the internal team. So every day is focused on what are we doing to maximize, um, how we show up every day for our customers. Um, and then it's also really focused on the team. Uh, the thing that matters to me most as chief revenue officer is my job is to build trust and enablement for my team. Um, and again, we have a world-class team that have great ideas. Uh, so my job is to block and tackle, get out of the way, uh, let them share their great ideas um, and go to market as quickly as possible. So that's what I've been doing the last five months. Uh, but it's been an amazing experience so far. Yeah, and it's gonna be amazing just to see this whole campaign and new launch, you know, unfold uh, to the public. So I want to thank both of you for um, choosing the speed of culture as one of the channels where you're sharing this news. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see uh, how successful this is. And congrats to both of you for being part of something so exciting and frankly, so meaningful for the consumer that you serve. Thank you, Matt. 
Absolutely. Great to see you both. On behalf of Susan and the Ivory team, thanks again to Shell Gresham and David Kim from Verizon Value for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to Speed of Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Till next time, see you soon, everyone. Take care. The Speed of Culture is brought to you by Suzy as part of the Adweek Podcast Network and AGAS Creator Network. You can listen and subscribe to all Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcasts. To find out more about Suzy, head to suzy.com. And make sure to search for The Speed of Culture in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Suzy, thanks for listening.